So, you might have heard that Riot struck a deal with Marvel, one of the most, if not the most popular comic book creator and publisher. And today we will talk about how big of an impact this deal will have on the story of League of Legends, what comics I would like to see in the future, and what is this EU-Northeast program LeBlanc code provided by the League Partner program doing on my Nutella sandwich. Oh, it is there to cover the EU West code. Hello everyone and welcome to a not so surprising video. A topic regarding the lore of League of Legends has emerged, so it is my duty to talk about it. So, about a week ago, on the 19th of November, Riot revealed that they have partnered with Marvel to bring us League of Legends comics. While this is massive news, it wasn't surprising as many of us knew about this almost a month before it happened. I don't wanna toot my own horn, but we even predicted this live on stream. In the middle of October, Riot Games as a company filed more patterns for stuff like paper prints, releasing art and even merch for something called Legends of Runeterra. While the name Legends of Runeterra could still become a new game, as some speculate. From the beginning it seemed obvious that we will get physical comic books. Specific trademark files for paper prints in the video game industry aren't that usual after all. And in the past Riot already released a bunch of their own comic stories. But now they officially went all in. According to the official Marvel post, the first comic will be released on the 19th of December. But don't think you'll be able to just walk into the comic book store that day and just straight up buy it. As far as we know, it will work a little bit differently. Riot will try to push out multiple series per month. And by series, I mean shorter stories similar to chapters. All of those will be done digitally. And every couple of months, Marvel will release a complete physical book containing all the chapters previously released. This physical bundle of comics will likely fall under the previously mentioned name, Legends of Runeterra. The official article says that the first complete graphic novel will be released in May 2019. That's when we will get the physical copy of this. Everything before that should be just digital releases. And the first digital release, again coming on the 19th of December, which is in just a couple of weeks, with pre-orders coming on the 5th of December, is Ash, War Mother. I'll give you more information on the release later when we dive into Riot's official video about this. But now, let's talk about what the first comic will cover. It will be an origin story telling us the legend of Ash, a young huntress of Freljord going on her mother's quest which will change Runeterra. At least that's what Ghost Scroller later mentions. But it is interesting when you realize that we already know what the conclusion of this story must be. Well, the part where something will change Runeterra is new, but the rest was already described in Ash's bio. And looking back at it, it makes sense why her bio was relatively recently tweaked. It was obviously done to support this comic which was likely being developed at the same time. So, what can we expect in this comic? From Marvel's article, we learn that the main theme of this comic will be Ash struggling as the leader of their people. Her mother will have fanatical expectations which will overwhelm our late teenager Ash. But her bio reveals even more. The setting of this story should be in ancient ancestral ruins. That's where Ash spent most of her childhood. But it will likely not be the Frostguard Citadel. That place is still occupied by Lysandra. And if Lysandra was involved, she would at least be on the cover art. We will get to this later as well. Her bio reveals that Ash always wanted to join the warlike tribes of the Tundra, and she wanted to see the warriors of the North united again. Remember, all of this is happening years and years after Lysandra essentially froze the majority of the legendary Iceborne, together with the Watchers in the Holding Abyss. So at this point, the tribes were scattered across the entire Freljord. Later, the bio also reveals what exactly happens to Ash's mother. Consider these major spoilers if you want to go into the comic blind, but you can always read this on Universe anyway. When Ash was 15, her mother was killed while commanding the tribe on a brash raid. So we know her mother will die at some point in the comic. Maybe it even happens at the very beginning. And that's what sets the story in place. Anyway, after the death of her mother, and with Ash clearly not being the leader the tribe wanted, you know, with the barbarians all being about revenge for their dead leader, but Ash wanting to let it be because she wanted to break the circle of violence, half of the tribe wanted Ash dead. And one day they just turned on her with blades drawn. Suddenly a mysterious great hawk appeared and guided her away to safety. It guided Ash to an Avarosan burial ground where Ash found the icy bow she wields now. The legendary bow spread ice through her veins and woke up tremendous power that always slept within her. She then killed the betrayers who tried to assassinate her and returned home. Others recognized the bow as a gift from Avarosa herself and their tribe fell before Ash to form the Avarosans. I specifically avoided calling her bow the bow of Avarosa, because Swain, being the master of knowledge, is skeptical about this weapon really being what we think it is. But that will likely be revealed in the comic. She claimed it was the Frost Queen's grave. They believed her. Also worth mentioning is that on the map of Runeterra, it is officially stated that Ash and Trindamir became oathbound at some point in the story. 
And the last interesting thing is that Riot renamed Hearth Home to Winter Spike on the map a couple of months ago. You know, Hearth Home being the Forge of Orn. It is likely that this was in preparation for these evolving stories. It was also partially done because Hearth Home was an ancient name and it might be lost in time. It is more likely that the current tribes gave it their own name, like Winter Spike. So, this is roughly what we can expect from this comic story. But I actually believe that most of this will be covered at the very beginning with flashbacks. Because we also know that these future comic books were written specifically to move the timeline of Runeterra forward. Yes, you heard it right! We are finally getting a source of lore that is aimed at progressing the storylines. Meaning that the comic starts during Ash's bio, but then ends at present times. And remember, this entire Freljordian story will be spread throughout multiple series that will be summarized in the physical copy in May 2019, and with multiple series being released each month. There is a lot of story development that will happen in that gap. But don't worry because we can go even deeper into the story right now, because Marvel also gave us a preview of some of the pages we can expect in this first chapter. The cover art itself reveals the main characters. Obviously Ash is in the middle already wielding the Bow of Avarosa with her mother on the left and her two supporting characters on the right. We know this is her mother because she later reappears in the same role in Riot's video. Some speculate that this first character is Sejuani, which isn't impossible but it is unlikely. The reason why it isn't impossible is because Marvel also revealed that the special edition of Ash War Mother will include 20 bonus pages. And in there you will find more information on all three of the major tribes. The Winter's Claw, the Avarosen and the Frost Guard. So the other leaders will be involved in the other chapters. The other character on the cover art is a shaman who will reappear quite often throughout the series. Of course, shamans are somewhat rare in the Frozen Tundras, as was revealed in Vayne's story, as well as in the story of Brand and Rise. Mostly people fear them because of superstitions, even though their healing abilities are irreplaceable. Some of them may even shapeshift into different beasts and animals. The first preview page takes place at the beginning of the comic. We know this because A. Ash doesn't have her bow yet, B. Her mother is there alive, and C. Ash's hair is blonde, it should turn white after she gets her bow. We can see the tribe traversing the frozen lands, likely trying to outrun the coming winter and looking for food, with the shaman looking over them and healing the wounded. From the way the comic is structured, this indeed looks like a sequence of either flashbacks or fast forwards, so it might be one of the introduction pages. The second page preview shows us Ash with the same shaman again, this time they are at a much safer place with plenty of food for everyone. But the scene pictures the shaman delivering some kind of bad news to Ash. This could be one of two things. Either this is when her mother died, or the shaman will have to leave them, because there is the possibility that this is the shaman who will later meet Vayne, and that would give us even more character development. The last preview page shows us the tribe on the move again, but this time Ash's mother is missing together with the shaman. Actually none of the characters from the cover art besides Ash are here, so we can expect something happening to all of them, and it shows that Ash is truly being pressured on her own. There is also the question whether this reappearing character, who was here at the beginning too, is Trindamir. He does have some similarities, but I doubt it. He should be from an entirely different tribe, but it's been a while since his story was updated as well. The last piece of interesting information with these previews is that these comics will be localized in 20 different languages. But now, let's move away from Marvel itself and let's have a look at what Ghostcrawler mentioned in Riot's video. The first major thing is that Riot will now move away from using comics as teasers. Instead, they will shove all of that talent into expanding the universe. Ghostcrawler also mentioned that they already have three series queued up for release. My bet is for one coming for each of the Freljordian tribes. Another big thing is that all of Riot's comics will be released for free six months after their release. So you won't miss out on any stories if you don't buy them. Also, we will try to cover them all on this channel. And lastly, Riot's goal is to sell League of Legends comic books in stores around the world just like any other Marvel comics. Which is something that would have sounded like crazy talk only a year ago. And the very last thing this video gives us is even more teasers for the first comic. We got a couple more images, including the Shaman, who's actually using the darker side of his or her powers here. We also got this shot of Ash confronting her mother in one of their settlement halls. This shot of Ash and her mother, which will likely be used in one of the introduction pages. But the most interesting of all is this scene. Here we see their village being obliterated by what seems to be an ice bomb exploding in the middle of it. Now this confused me for a bit. I don't think we have heard about icy explosions in the stories before, so this one made me curious. An icy explosion setting off in the middle of unexpected people. Where in the recently reworked game have I seen that before? Anyway, that's all Riot's video can offer us. Now let's move on to predictions and what I would like to see. What I think will be the most accurate prediction is a comic about Kale and Morgana. There is one simple reason why I believe this will happen. 
during Riot's PAX panel in 2018. All the members of the panel talked about what they are excited about the most. And the comic artist, who by the way worked at Marvel for 4 years, said that without spoilers she is the most excited about Kale and Morgana, without really telling us why. This to me seems like a potential Kale and Morgana comic. Now, since this was a couple of months ago, it may still be just a teaser comic for their release, since we know they are getting updated. But Ghost Scholar said that the comics will now focus on larger stories, so maybe we will really get a complete comic book about them. My second prediction is about Swain. When Swain's story was released, for some reason Riot decided to completely avoid talking about Swain's demon. You know, the thing that saved his life, replaced his hand, and which he outsmarted and is now able to control. We know nothing about it. Which is weird, because that was the most interesting point in his story. So I wouldn't be surprised if Riot avoided it on purpose, so they could turn it into a comic book plot point. And my third prediction is the Darkin. At this point, the story of the Darkin is so massive, there is no way Riot will not cash in on it by releasing a story about their corruption. The majority of who the Darkin are was already explained to us by stories such as Twilight of the Gods, or Vladimir's bio. But some things still lie in mystery. What happened after Varys' story? He is now in Shrima looking for the other Darkin. Or how did the Moonstalkers take down all the big Darkin warlords? I mean, we know because of Zoe. But some of those plot points would be really good for comic books. But if you ask me, all I want is a comic that involves Bard heroically saving humanity by taking their toys away. And of course, I would really like to see Swain's demon. In the end, these comic books should be a massive turning point for the story of League of Legends. Not only will we finally get a proper developing story, but Riot can now introduce new characters that they can turn into champions later, giving us this feeling of excitement because we already know about the heroic deeds of these newcomers. This entire Marvel deal also reveals what Mark Merrill and Brandon Beck are actually doing at Riot. We always get told that they are handling the meetings and paperwork. We already heard about them getting a deal with Mastercard, but I believe that the Marvel deal might be another fruit of their labor. Now, with a little bit of hope in our hearts, and with all the Marvel Multiverse shenanigans, let's root for Heimerdinger forming the new Avengers. <laughs> hey, did you know that we have social media and Twitch where we talk about other League facts and stories? And did you know that we have Need mugs and shirts too? The links to all of that will be below. And as always, thank you, come again.